welcome to Pentecost Sunday. So glad you are here with us today. I have a couple of reminders for you as we prepare. If you've not already prepared a communion table, we will be receiving Holy Communion virtually this Sunday. And so please gather what you need together in order for communion to take place around your table. It's perfectly okay for you to have bread or crackers to share and either juice or a beverage in separate cups uh, to be able to share with one another around the table as you are able. The other thing I want to share today is that we will be receiving a new member. Her name is Jackie. And I just ask that during the worship service today, you keep her in prayer. Pentecost Sunday. This is a Sunday where we normally talk about the Spirit filling us and God sending us out into the world to tell the good news of Jesus. Today Bishop Chris is going to be offering the proclamation and uh, the good news of Christ to us. Uh, this was meant to be my final Sunday originally a year ago. This is what we had planned and he was going to be here and of course because of COVID-19 he is not uh, but that is perfectly fine. We're able to celebrate in spirit together, and that is, after all, uh, the effect and effort of Pentecost, is it not? So please join me now in our hymn of praise. This is the Feast of Victory for Our God. free to be 
Continue with the prayer of the day. O oh God, on this day you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending into us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the Spirit's light that we may live faithfully and act justly in all things, rejoicing at all times in your peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. We'll continue now with our first reading. The first reading today is the traditional reading from Pentecost from chapter 2 of Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under, living in Ju under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes. Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show port portents of in the heaven above, and the signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the Holy Gospel according to St. John. It's the seventh chapter. On the last day of the festival of booths, the great day, while Jesus was standing in the temple, he cried out, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water, now he, that is Jesus, said this about the spirit which believers in him were to receive, for as yet there was no spirit, because Jesus had not yet been glorified. The Gospel of the Lord. Sisters and brothers, dear friends, and most especially on this day, to the saints of God at Zion, Chelsea, and most particularly, to Pastor Kathy Tolman, to her husband John, to her daughters Jenna and Alyssa and their family and the friends that are able to participate this day through this means. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ who said from the believer's heart will come rivers of living water. 
I am uh, Bishop Don Chris, and it is my privilege to have uh, worked alongside and to have uh, traveled with Pastor Kathy uh, on our last Synod trip to Africa. I bring you greetings on behalf of the 106 other congregations in Southeast Michigan that will be gathering with us today, uh, remotely in this kind of way. I bring you greetings as well from members of my staff. That will be uh, Pastor Sean Eubank, Ms. Uh, uh, Pastor Lauren Kirschkar, Miss Beth Fisher, and of course from Ms. Robin McCants, who was another companion on the journey, who sends her special greetings and regards, Kathy. So, today is the day, at least the day that I was planning on being with you, and no, dear saints in Zion, that Pastor Tillman and I talked about this for some long time, at least a long time in the before time, before COVID, before the pandemic, before all of this became so complicated. I know that I was really looking forward to being able to celebrate the day with you and with, with Pastor Kathy and her family, and to celebrate with you the conclusion of a really fine ministry among you. So we're still going to do that, but it's going to be this way. Uh, but know that on the day, my heart and my prayers are with you all. This was not at all what we had expected when Pastor Tolman and I talked about that. And I guess that's appropriate because that, that first Pentecost day was not at all what the disciples had expected. Now, you heard that uh, wonderful and familiar text from Acts, that one with all the place names that make even the most skillful readers' eyes cross and get them all knotted up before they get into the lectern or in front of the camera, as it were. And there are other, um, other parts of the Pentecost story that are also familiar, and, and that image of the tongues of, of fire dancing on the heads and the great wind that comes down from heaven all those are images and they're part of the, the fire and the pageantry. Even the color of Pentecost is meant to be red. You'll already have noticed that I'm not wearing red and I'll talk more about that later in just a minute. But all of that, the wind and the fire and, and those place names and the language and the people saying, how is it that these folks are speaking in language we understand? And then the gospel that I read, the one that Pastor Tolman and I talked about me sharing, is this passage from John, from early on in John's gospel, when Jesus is still working hard at, at, at convincing people that he is, in fact, who he says he is. And I commend to your reading the seventh chapter that, that uh, where these verses are taken from, where Jesus and the disciples get in this elaborate back and forth about you need to do this publicly so that people believe you. No, Jesus says, I'm not ready to do that. Well, if you don't do it publicly, no. And you get this interesting, challenging back and forth that speaks so much, I think, to our day and time. And in fact, to this day and this time when we're doing our very, very best to continue to be church to proclaim the gospel in ways that we had not expected, to use technology that we hadn't thought of before, and to gather connected by the grace of the Holy Spirit. That's Pentecost, the fire, the wind, and in this passage, that astonishing passage from Jesus, he says, listen to me, he says, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and let the one who believes in me drink. For out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. And that's the image, I think, from Pentecost that isn't always lifted up. We're good at fire, we're good at wind, that breath of the Holy Spirit. But here in the text that we've chosen for the day, it is rivers of living water that slakes our thirst, that waters our fields, that cleans us and challenges us, that we bathe in, that we swim in, that refreshes us, and that reminds us that we are alive. That's the image that we're using today. That's the passage that Pastor Tolman has chosen, and I think it's so appropriate and so important for a day like today. That image of living water, although it's not one of the ones that we think of 
instantly or immediately when we think about Pentecost, that image of living water flowing out of the believer's heart is such an important image for this day, and in fact for Pastor Kathy's whole ministry. Now, she came to you in 2014, but do you remember that she was ordained in 2009? Pastor Tolman is what we call a second career pastor, and she had remarkable, remarkable career and ministry, not in church necessarily, but in ministry as a teacher and a coach and a church worker. But that river of living water that kept flowing, that kept pushing her down, you know, bobbing from bank to bank, leading her through interesting rapids and through interesting quiet times and maybe even through a couple of waterfalls, that water, that river of living water got her to seminary ordained in 2009 and brought her to you in 2014. And that's an astonishing journey and one that is so appropriate to celebrate on this Pentecost day where with thoughtful prayer and faithful deliberation, Pastor Kathy, in consultation of course with her husband John, decided that no, this is a, an appropriate and faithful time to come to the end of a, of a called, settled, ordained ministry with the people of God that I know that she's come to love. And so even in the midst of all the unexpected pieces, know that this was something that, that Pastor Tolman and I talked about, we prayed over together, she considered deeply, and, and this feels to her and to me like a good time for the people of Zion to begin another chapter. We do that with thanks to God for Pastor Tolman's serious, faithful work among you. We do that with thanks, for, thanks to God for her, for her deep commitment to relationships and community building and, and faith formation. She is leaving you, dear saints of Zion, in a wonderful place to begin a next chapter of ministry. And so we celebrate that, even as we celebrate Pentecost, that astonishing, astonishing river of living water that keeps flowing in all of our hearts and all of our lives. Now, the, the piece, and I wanted to share this with you, the reason that I'm not wearing red today is that I, I got to know Kathy, and I'm just going to call her that from now on here in this, in this presentation. I got to know Kathy most deeply when we traveled to Africa together. You may remember, you may know, that our companion synod there in Africa is in uh, the country of Tanzania, and our companion synod is the Mbulu Diocese. It's a lovely, rural, mountainous, uh, remarkable place in northeast Tanzania. It is the last diocese in the country that does not ordain women. We work at that. However, one of the absolute gifts that Pastor Tolman brought with her was she wore a collar every day. And by her proclamation, by her sturdy presence, by her faithfulness, by her gravitas, by her wisdom, by her compassion, by the leadership and the prayers that she offered as we gathered with folks, she offered a different view of that river of living water that flows through believers' hearts. Now, it's going to be a long time for change to come in that part of Africa. I think that even Kathy and I would both reluctantly agree about that. But I want you to know, dear saints, what a powerful and remarkable witness she was. Coming out of her own faith formation, as I said, these, these sort of acts of public ministry that led her to seminary and ordination and to you. And then with me, and this was the uniform that I wore every day. Not the same shirt necessarily, don't worry about that. But it was navy blazer, bishop shirt, cross, and khaki pants. And together, for about 11 days, Pastor Kathy and I represented the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ to our sisters and brothers in Tanzania. And she, very faithfully, very, very robustly, offered them a vision of what it looks like to be an ordained woman in the church, to be a pastor in God's church, and to be female. And it was a remarkable gift to me and I think to our sisters, absolutely to our sisters, and even to some of our brothers in Tanzania. 
But those two weeks were a wonderful time to be together. We traveled through uh, the Companion Synod into some remarkable places, and then we ended with a safari, and it was just a remarkable experience. And, and, and Kathy's expertise in geology and, and, and uh, plants, botany, and that sort of thing was just, it was a wonderful gift to be together. So thank you for sharing her with us on that day. This is, as I said, the Feast of Pentecost. It was a surprise that first time, although we can count on it, it comes every year, 50 days after Easter. And it's marked by fire and by wind. And on this day, I want you to remember by these living, living waters, rivers that feed and nourish and support and wash the believers. So that's the river that we're going to commend, and that's the river to commend Kathy and John to today. That's the river that we're going to invite them in our minds and hearts to get into their, they can pick the conveyance, their canoe, their kayak, their rowboat, tugboat, their gigantic river steamer, and begin to get onto that river and to head to their next place. Now, Kathy and John have shared with me, as I expect they've shared with you, that they're going to be moving back up to northern Wisconsin to be closer to family and friends and to begin that new chapter in their life together. But I am confident, as I expect you are too, that that water, that living water, that river of living water that flows out of the believer's heart is going to continue to flow out of Kathy's heart because she will not stop ministry. Oh, she may stop being the called and ordained pastor as she has been with you. I don't expect she's going to have another settled gig at least for a while. But I cannot imagine that Pastor Kathy Tolan, the woman that you know, the colleague that I know, the friend that we all care for, she will not stop ministry simply because she's moving into another chapter of her life with John, but instead will continue by her life, by her witness, by her preaching occasionally, I expect, to remind believers to look for the river of living water that flows out of the believer's heart, that water that nourishes all of us, that water of Pentecost, that brings with it memories of fire and wind, but today of water to nourish and guide and bless us as we go forward. So blessings, my dear friend. Blessings to you as well, John. Travel safe to Northern Wisconsin. Be of good cheer and remember that the waters that flow there are connected to us here and that you'll always be welcome in Southeast Michigan. God's grace and peace to you both, and may this Pentecost, this day of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, be a day of a new start in the chapter of Zion Chelsea as well. Peace, dear friends, and amen. We'll continue now with the hymn of the day, and what a special hymn it is. Presented by the Association of Lutheran Musicians, you're going to have over 1,000 musicians, uh, both instrumental and vocal, uh, singing and also playing O Day Full of Grace. The words are provided. Enjoy.
And now let us profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we continue in a time of prayer. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Reconciling God. We confess we do not trust your abundance. We deny your presence and we place our hope in ourselves rather than in trusting in your grace and mercy. Forgive us. Renew us and lead us so we may live and serve you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Breathe life into your creation, spirit who hovers above the waters. Guide us as we explore the mysteries of the universe. Protect all who work with and on the land. We pray especially for those involved with cleanup of natural disasters, those working outdoors in the heat and humidity, and our farmers as they continue to plant and tend to crops, herds, and equipment. Help us always to be good stewards of all you have given us, sharing with neighbors in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy One, we call on your spirit of righteousness, unity and healing comfort us as we live in this time of separation remind us that we are never truly separate because you make us one for those who can't breathe because of oppression from any front give us courage to stand with them for what is just give patience to those struggling to understand give hope for those weary of the struggle to end hatred Help us remember that all lives matter. Black and brown lives, elderly lives, children's lives, farmers' lives, the lives of those with underlying health conditions, all lives. Advocate on our behalf and on behalf of all who are in need. Stir up in us the courage to face our own blindness and deafness. Make us your witnesses to your love, your mercy, your hope, and your peace especially in these unsure times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Blessed Savior, come to the aid of your children. We pray for those struggling for their lives, for those engulfed in grief, for those suffering from loss of jobs, benefits, physical and emotional health and more. We pray for all those serving on the front lines, from doctors who diagnose and nurses who treat, to service workers who change beds and those who stock shelves and pack boxes for shipment. We pray for our mail carriers. Give solutions to those families who are heading back to work while kids still need home care and schooling. Keep us safe, be our shield, help us heal well if we are struck down by any illness. We pray especially for Larry, and for all those who are on our prayer list here at Zion, for all who are in the front lines who are on our list as well, for anyone who is in harm's way, I ask that you also pray for those who are on your hearts today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Raise all your saints to eternal life. Teach us to live into your kingdom coming here on earth while trusting we too will be with you one day, feasting at the great banquet table you promise. Give us patience and perseverance. We pray for those who mourn Mike Wilson's loss as we laid his remains to rest this past week, and for all families and friends of those who have lost their lives. We pray for the day when we will gather together, together here to mourn 
and to grieve loss. We pray too for those times where we will gather again to celebrate. Until those days come to be, keep us engaged and hopeful in you and in your church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us live now in peace and hope, trusting in God's radical abundance and divine mercy. For hope does not disappoint because God's love is being poured into our hearts to overflowing each and every day. Let the people say, Amen. We'll continue now with a time of offering, and I ask that you share around the table something you are thankful for from this week. I ask, too, that you share prayers uh, of thanksgiving for our congregation, its mission, and its ministries at this time. Let us pray together. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens and earth beneath our feet. Nourish us through the gifts you provide that we proclaim your steadfast love in our homes, in our communities, and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now we'll continue with Holy Communion. I ask that you uncover the elements that you have prepared in front of you on the table at this time. Please choose one person uh, to be uh, the leader of your household uh, and uh, have that person please prepare and have the elements ready for communion and time of eating. What we will do is I will give uh, a sign at the end where I will say this is the body, take and eat, and then pass the host around first and then pass the juice around and I'll say the same thing. You'll eat all together. Let's continue. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is truly good. And it is a hopeful and loving sign that in all times and places we are able to give thanks to God for all we have been given. And especially for God's Son, Jesus Christ, who came to this earth and loved us so much and died for us and was raised so we too can experience eternal life. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, our Lord took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. It's given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, Jesus took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, Drink from this cup, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Remembering, therefore, this salutary command that we are to eat and drink together, Jesus' life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, Holy One, not as we ought, but as we are able. Fill us with blessing and grace and form us to live as your holy people. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Now remember us in your kingdom and hear us as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. This is the body of Christ. Take and eat. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ may have strengthened you and give you God's grace this day and every day. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, you have fed us with your word and our hearts burn within us. Now through this meal, you have opened us to your presence. Send us forth to share the gifts of Pentecost and beyond with all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Jesus says in the Gospel of Matthew that wherever two or more are gathered in my name, God is with us. As we worship, as we grow in Christ, through study, fellowship, and praying together, as we celebrate Christ's church being born and its continuation in so many ways, shapes, and forms, we recognize also the call of those seeking faith communities where they too can live, grow, and serve. Through this pandemic, we have been blessed to have a number of people join us in worship online. We don't see their faces, but we know they are present. Retired Jackie, retired pastor Jackie Spangler Ahern, after having worshiped with us for the past couple of months and following conversations with me, has asked and has been accepted by the church council as a new member at Zion Lutheran Church. She is transferring from St. Andrew Lutheran Church in New Bern, North Carolina, where she and her husband winter. You may read more about Jackie in the Friday update. Please welcome her. And Jackie, may the fruits of the Spirit that you bring to Zion, both now and in the future, further God's mission and God's ministries here. Blessings to you. Amen. And now hear these words of sending. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you God's peace today and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now our sending hymn. 